Welcome to No Mama Girl Mama with your host, Nalady Stones, where we discuss all topics related to health and wellness for you and your whole family. In this episode, I speak with Dr. Jack Newman, one of the leading breastfeeding advocates in Canada, and he shares with us one of the most important aspects, probably the most important aspect of breastfeeding, and that is the latch. So whether you're an expectant mom, a new mom, or someone that has chosen extended breastfeeding, whichever um, challenges that you might encounter in your breastfeeding journey, he reminds us that it always comes back to the latch. And so in this episode, he shows us how to get that perfect latch and what to look for. And of course, talks about also where to go for help if you need it. So take something from this episode. I would say even if you bottle fed your baby, you could potentially help somebody in their breastfeeding journey. So learn something today and enjoy. Welcome. Joining us here for No Mama, Grow Mama, I am your host, Nalady Stones, and we are super honored to be here today speaking with Dr. Jack Newman. Thank you so much for coming to speak with us today. We've got a really important message to share, and I'm glad that we get to use this platform to share your message with more moms. All right. So I, w I really want to start with, I've, I've known your name for about 10 years now when I was a nursing student. Um, and I did actually refer to your resources a little bit when I had my, my babes. But I don't know if every mom knows who you are. So can you share a little bit about your clinic, the Newman Breastfeeding Clinic and Institute? Share your work with us. Tell us what you do there. Well, the clinic in various uh, guises has uh, been around since 1984. And I started that clinic because uh, I realized that mothers were often getting very bad advice about breastfeeding. Right. They were often getting off to a very poor start with all sorts of unnecessary interventions and being undermined by all sorts of uh, health professionals in their breastfeeding journey. Right. And so I thought, well, all right. But I mean, what I know about breastfeeding at the time was kind of elementary, but it seemed to help a lot of mothers right. and as time went on uh, we got a lot of experience so we've probably seen 50,000 mothers since wow. 1984 wow. and so we have a lot of experience and we now uh, uh, see mothers for all sorts of problems right all sorts of problems so not all just sorts. breastfeeding and lactation <clears throat> oh no 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 for breastfeeding problems okay but sometimes the mothers have breastfeeding problems and they don't realize it's a breastfeeding problem right we call it something <clears throat> else i actually was looking at your site again last night and sometimes we do call it candida or other things right but so you said that some of what you were doing was really elementary but it's at first like, yeah but it seems like you're still staying at that core information like it's still really about the latch and the relationship absolutely. no matter what the problem is absolutely uh, but achieving the good latch has changed okay. and we've learned a lot. We've learned a lot about what is the ideal latch. We've learned a lot about uh, various things that interfere with the latch. So for example, uh, something that has come up over the last few years is, well, you know, you start off with a mother who's got no problems at all. Mm -hmm. She's got a lot of milk, but the milk supply for some reason decreases. Okay. One of the results of the decrease is that she starts getting sore nipples because the baby slips down right. on the nipple or the baby pulls the, at the nipple or both. And this doesn't necessarily mean that the baby's not getting enough milk. Right. It means that the milk supply is decreased, but since it's a mother who starts off with an abundant milk supply, it still could be enough. But the baby doesn't know what's in the breast. Right. The mother, the baby doesn't know what the mother is producing. Right. What he knows or she knows is it's not coming as fast as it used to. Right. And so they pull at the nipple, they slip down at the nipple, and the mother gets sore nipples. Right. Can you talk about some of like the basic things to look for then? Because I'm sure it's probably pretty similar whether your baby is minutes old to whether your baby is months old, to what to watch for so that you know? Sure, and what we teach is how to know the baby's getting milk. That's simply the most important thing in understanding breastfeeding. Right. And it's been going on for years, and it's even been used as a positive for fo bottle feeding because I know how much the baby is getting. Right. But you can know that the baby is getting milk or not, and you can see this 
at one minute after birth, you can see it six months later, you can see it two years later. And I'll just show it. If you, if this is the baby's chin and that's the baby's upper lip, yes. when a baby actually gets milk, the baby will open up wide like this and then pause and then close. Right. So pause, pause, pause means I just got a mouthful of milk. Right. And the longer the pause, the more milk the baby got. It's simple, but I can tell you that 99% of nurses, even lactation consultants, uh, physicians, pediatricians don't know this. Right. Or they don't seem to know, uh, act as if they know it. Because once the mother knows this, pause, she knows when the baby's getting milk. Right. And she also knows when the baby's not getting milk. And that's really important. Right. Because a lot of people are telling mothers, you should feed the baby at only one breast so he gets the high fat milk. Right. But if the baby's only nibbling instead of drinking, it's not gonna get he's not getting high fat yeah, milk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's really neat. It, I think it's too bad that we've gotten to this point, but I really think it's so important to spread what you're saying even more because I, I really, this, this whole series is about educating Absolutely. the mothers, the fathers, anyone, because yeah. really, we're, every human being is affected by whether they're breastfed or whether not. Whether they're breastfed or not, and how that experience goes. Sure. So it's important for every person in the world to be knowledgeable about this. That's and I right. really, again, about this series is about giving people the power back. Yeah. Our healthcare professionals are very important. Thank you for your work because you are very important. But we need to also know this sure. so that we can and that's help ourselves, I... help other mothers sure. that are challenged. Yeah. And that's why I come here. Right. I mean, I'm not getting paid for it. Right. Uh, I come here because there's a lot of uh, parents around, You're very and happy. they need to know about this. And uh, uh, you know, the when I first suggested the uh, clinic at the Hospital of Sick Children in Toronto, yes. One of the things that I had written in the uh, uh, the document asking to be able to start a breastfeeding clinic there was the whole purpose of this clinic is to make itself obsolete, unnecessary. Right. It's got to be about the parents. It's got to be about the mother. It's got to be. But I mean, I mean, technology is important too. But it's it's got to be that we know the blueprint for it. Yeah. That it always go back to that latch. That's right. Yeah. And how the baby drinks or not. How the baby drinks or not. How do we get this ball rolling again? Of teaching people. I mean, that's what you're working at. That's, that's what your what book I'm is about. At. Your Facebook page, your website. That's what everything's about. Yeah, that's that's what right. About. And that's uh, you know what we teach the mothers in the clinic. Right. And it's such a difficult problem for some people to understand. Right. Because they figure if the baby's latched on and if the baby's making sucking sucking movements, he must be getting milk. And that's just not true. Right. And we get all sorts of you know myths about breastfeeding that are new myths. Right. So, for example, mothers are always told. Uh, that, oh, your baby is transferring milk well, or the baby is not transferring milk well. Well, uh, I'm sorry, but that doesn't make any sense. Right. What makes sense is that the mother transfers the milk, not the baby. In other words, here's an example. Uh, baby is lying, uh, you know, sleeping on a, I don't know, on a bed, right. and wakes up and starts to cry. Mm -hmm. The mother is not put him to the breast, but she all of a sudden, all, the whole front of her uh, blouse is wet. Right. So who transferred the milk? Yeah, the mother does. The mother did. And uh, sure, the baby does his part. In this case, waking up and saying, "Hey, I'm hungry." Right. So the baby does his part, but the mother is the one who transfers the milk. And if you understand that, you understand one of the myths about breastfeeding, which is the bre breastfeeding tires babies out. They have to work right. hard at it. Yeah. They have to pull the milk out of the breast. This is complete nonsense. They don't have to do anything of the sort. If the milk flows the baby will get the milk. Right. It's, in, it's understanding that relationship back and forth. That's right. In your experience, over 30 years, I didn't realize it was 50,000 families well, that, that you've about 2,000 a year. How often do you see that you just have to put the baby on bottle or formula? No, we don't put them on bottles. Never. We, well, we try not to, okay. but we, uh, if supplementation is necessary, and this, this is an issue for us because uh, well, there are many reasons. I mean, there, first of all, there, is, there are some mothers who really cannot produce all the milk the baby needs. Right, okay. The majority of mothers who are not producing all the milk that the baby needs uh, are that way because 
they got off to such a terrible start right. that they get such terrible uh, information and they do it all completely wrong right. from the point of view of really getting this going correctly. Right. I think the problem is if, you know, if we, uh, if we go to uh, third world countries, out to the uh, countryside, the mothers are all breastfeeding right. because they don't have the wrong information. They have a long tradition of mother to the child so, And supporting learning. each other. That's yeah, exactly. right, and supporting each other. Yeah. Uh, but we do in this uh, in our situation. We do encourage mothers to supplement sometimes, but with a lactation aid at the breast. That's a tube at the breast right. that brings formula or expressed milk or uh, donated milk right. into the baby while he's on the breast. Right. And the reason we do that is well, there are many reasons we do that. But one of the reasons is if the baby gets a gets the breast and then he gets a bottle, a lot of babies will just stop breastfeeding. Right. If they're using this tube at the breast, then usually they keep breastfeeding and they're doing fine. Uh, sure, not all mothers can produce all the milk the baby needs. Some mothers have been so messed up that they're not producing all the milk the baby needs. Right. But in this case, the mothers are still breastfeeding. And what I say, maybe too often for some people, breastfeeding is a close, physical, and emotional relationship yes. and even if you can't breast uh, breastfeed exclusively you can still continue to breastfeed with this little gadget at the breast right and just look at that bond that's right there's yeah. more to breastfeeding than milk right i guess part of my question was wondering because there are a lot of people that will say it just doesn't work so is there ever cases that you say 100 percent it cannot work i would say that almost never if we get on top of the problem immediately. Right. But unfortunately, in our clinic, we sometimes see mothers who are, th you know, have been uh, having problems for three months. The baby's right. three months old. Right. Well, it, the farther away from birth, the more difficult it is to change problems. Okay, that was my next question was, is it ever too late to go back? No, it's not. Okay. No, it's not. We've gotten babies who refuse to latch on to latch on at three months of age for the first time. Now, again, the farther away it it's is, the more difficult it yeah, is. Yeah, right. They've learned about the bottle. Well, yeah. it's good to know, because I really want this to not be about shaming anyone that's made a, different, a difficult choice with having to bottle feed instead. It's just about moving forward from today, trying something different. And, you know, even if you had to bottle feed because of poor support in the past, you know, you can still educate other moms. Sure enough. You know, I'm and just it, talking about other and, moms helping yeah. each other. Yeah. And it's not about shaming the mother. If the mother did not get good help, the shame falls on the people that didn't give her the support. Or I would even hope that we could just help to educate them as well. Well, we yeah. need to. Yes, yeah. We need to. I can say without uh, fear of contradiction that the vast majority of health professionals don't know the first thing about breastfeeding. No idea. No clue. And I can vouch because I did. I I, I am a nurse uh, mm -hmm. by training. I'm not practicing right now, but I did do some uh, training on an obstetrical unit in a lactation ward. And maybe it was just that I wasn't picking up on the certain words, but you know, like just that simple looking for the pause, looking for Would that pause been, in the chin. That's right. You to can know see, if there's something that needs to be that's fixed. Right. And yeah, you sorry. can see it at one hour after birth right. or even one minute after birth. Right. And if you come to my talk, you'll see it. Yes, I, I would love to come to okay. your talk, yeah. And I, and I know looking at your website, you do have wonderful resources. So I'll make sure that we've got some links okay, great. On, our, on our show to make sure that people can find all your resources because okay. you've got translated videos and everything. Right. Um, I did have another question and that's gone now from my mind. I'm going to look at my note for a second. That's okay. Are there any other things in developing in research that you're really interested in, that you're really passionate about? Well, one thing that we're really doing, uh, we just started a study, uh, we've been, you know, we've noticed this for several years, but the study of why uh, mothers who start off with an abundant milk supply have a decrease in their milk supply as the weeks and months go on. Typically around three or four months, they run into problems that they probably should never have run into. Right. So, I mean, there are many reasons for this. Sometimes mothers are told you must feed the baby on just one breast. Yeah. That's a problem. And I think the problem there is, uh, you know, there are no rules. So, you know, feed the baby on the first side and offer the second. If the baby's full, he won't take the second side. Right. Uh, and it doesn't always work. I mean, a mother can have a lot of milk and the baby can uh, breastfeed fine on one breast first thing in the morning, but right. mothers have less milk in the evening. So what works first thing in the morning may not work in the evening. Right. So get rid of the rules and listen to your baby, right. read your baby. Your baby knows what he wants.
comes always comes back to the trust and the instincts. Right. And and the communication between you and right. your baby. I like that. It's just oh, it's so simple. Well, it Why should we be simple. It? Yeah, That's it should right. be simple. You're right. Are there any? real really great pearls of wisdom that you have for new mothers like for someone that's expecting that that's just new in this journey what is the best thing that you can tell them to get them started on the right foot well as i as i implied kind of summarizing yeah. yeah as i implied you know if you know when the baby's getting milk then you know when the baby's not getting milk and if you know this you know when you need to get help right. and the other thing i would say along that line is breastfeeding should not hurt and yes. if it hurts, then you're then if something's not right, and it can almost always be fixed if we get to you early. Right. So go back to knowing when your baby is drinking and when the baby is uh, latched on. And I don't care what anybody says. If it hurts when the baby latches on, it means that the baby is not well latched on. Right. And the farther away from birth, the more difficult it is to fix. Right. How will moms know if they're not getting the great, great support either? So they know that they've got this uh, latch problem. They know that their nipples are sore or, or baby's not getting that pause. They're asking for help from somebody, but they're not getting the greatest well, support. I'll tell you, well, there's lots of things that are told in this situation. They say, well, take the baby off the breast, just feed them by express milk by bottle. Well, that doesn't help right. because mothers do want to breastfeed. And if they start giving bottles until their nipples heal, then you know, then they've got another problem, which is the baby may not go back to the breast once their nipples are healed. Right. That's not the right answer. And it's not the right answer most of the time, but unfortunately it's being given right. a lot of the time. So any kind of drastic switch that they're asking That's right. you to make is That's right. it's probably not the best way. Yep. Yeah, and then what, so what would they do next? Would they go to their, they can, contact you directly? They can contact me directly. <laughs> they can really? go to our website. Okay. They can, uh, if they're in, you know, We've had mothers come from Thunder Bay. Really? We've had mothers come from Nor uh, Nova Scotia because okay. they can't get help where they live. Right. We've had mothers come from the Yukon. There's just wow. poor, poor help out there. And I think that if, uh, you know, you're being told right away, oh, you got to supplement your baby, then uh, uh, maybe that's, uh, maybe that's necessary in some cases because the mothers started off so badly, but that's not the end of the story. Right. The end of the story is we can still fix it. And it's getting back to... It's getting back to breastfeeding. Exactly. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate this. Okay, you have wonderful work. Pleasure to meet you. So we'll put some more information in our show notes for today, some re how to find resources to Jeff uh, Newman's work. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you have more questions, you can always even email in to us. And we could ask Dr. Jack because he is so, he's such a wonderful resource. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah,